Uh, my name is Jonathan Karpf. I teach at San Jose State University. Uh, I'm a long-term lecturer, which in the California State University system is the term we use for faculty off the tenure line. Our affiliation with the AUP and my uh, continuing and growing interest in being more active within the AUP is tied to the, to the notion that it, it is um, different university systems, whether they're organized or not, tend to look within. But the AUP is able to defend its, the, the profession as a whole. And as far as I can see, it's the only organization that has the, either the inclination or the ability to defend higher education on the national stage. We are affiliated with SEIU, that's our labor affiliate. We are affiliated with uh, NEA, National Education Association. Um, but our only professional affiliate is the AUP. And, it, and the affiliation with AUP, to many of us in the professorate, is the most important of our affiliates for a number of reasons. Uh, the AUP, quite simply, is the moral authority, the moral compass for the academy uh, and for the profession of higher education, uh, the twin pillars of uh, academic freedom and shared governance, which are so central to what we do, and it's so central to it's the underpinning of of higher education in the American context. Uh, the only real organization that is actively defending the academy is the AUP. We have a saying in the CFA, which you've no doubt heard in the lecture council, that what it means to be a, a contingent faculty member in the CSU is to never be more than 15 seconds away from total humiliation, and even in the best of situations, and I'm better off than most, uh, being off the tenure line and lacking real structural job security means dealing, uh, if not on a daily, uh, on, a, on a fairly frequent basis, with, with indignities, with a lack of respect from not all, but a number of one's colleagues. And so faculty off the tenure line have to develop a very thick skin, and some of them, unfortunately, uh, See, a, they construct it as an us versus them, and they see tenure and their tenured colleagues as the problem, and they don't understand that. That I mean, it's 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 not that there aren't tenure line faculty who have been almost willingly blind to seeing the erosion of the academy and the erosion of tenure, and failing to see that contingent faculty are sort of the canary in the coal mine, and what happens to us will then happen to them unless we all work together. But this sort of knee-jerk, I've seen it on both sides, obviously, but I, there are definitely faculty on contingent appointments who don't see commonality with their tenured colleagues. And in my experience, I mean, there'll, there'll always be some tenured fa faculty like that, but it's, it's, based, it's individual. Uh, there are many allies among the tenured faculty, and the ones that really see it clearly are the ones who understand that, you know, there but for the grace of whomever go I. So it's, it's unfortunate, but that's, that's what divisions can lead to, and it's one reason why uh, we lecturers in, this, in the California State University system are quite fortunate to be in a single bargaining unit. Um, I know all the arguments for why there are separate bargaining units for tenure-line faculty and faculty on contingent appointments, but I think that we are a very good example of what you can gain and what you can gain for a contingent faculty if you're in a single bargaining unit because the administration has learned, they, it's not that they no longer try, but they've learned that you can't really divide us. And uh, in the CFA at least, uh, the lecture council, which is one of the two councils in the CFA, is seen as a model for how the whole union should operate. Uh, in fact, they just created a new officer position, and it's it, I'm, I'm occupying it. I mean, there are now two associate vice presidents for lectures in the CFA, so two of the nine statewide officers are faculty off the tenure line. And that's a recognition that, that what, what happens to lectures happens to the entire professorate in the CSU. I mean, the sort of advice I would give would differ based on whether 
the faculty were organized or not. Yeah. Uh, in a collective bargaining chapter, like the California Faculty Association, we have a collectively bargained contract which has the weight of law behind it. We have bar binding arbitration as a final resort if we can't get uh, disputes resolved at lower levels. Uh, faculty who teach uh, in right-to-work states where they aren't able to organize or if they are private universities and they're governed by the yeshiva decision are facing very different challenges. Uh, the one thing I would say is that uh, anything worth having has always been fought for and before faculty were unionized and before there was even the enabling legislation that allowed unionization that didn't mean that there w there wasn't unionization going on and what I would recommend to all faculty is to see the commonality among all their colleagues and to not buy into the false distinctions that serve the interests of sort of the corporate interests that want to have, I mean, a two-tiered system. I mean, the shrinking tenure line, a growing c sector of contingent faculty, and any time that you have that sort of a division, it makes it very easy for campus administrations to play one against the other and d essentially divide and conquer. And so one advice I would give anybody, whether they are in organized campuses or systems or non-organized ones, advocacy chapters or even ones that aren't connected, even advocacy chapters in the AUP, is that what's key is solidarity. What's key is, is not allowing a pe what could be constructed as you know divisions to come to the fore and to see that we either all move forward or we all go down together. Uh, I'm a contingent faculty member. I will, you know, teaching as long as I have as a lecturer, even if a tenure line position opened up my department, there's no way that I would be able to get it. I'm simply too old. They already get the labor from me without having me on the tenure line. But that doesn't mean that I don't understand the value of tenure. And I'm a very staunch supporter of tenure because without tenure, you have no academic freedom. And it's important for uh, faculty off the tenure line to see solidarity and common cause with faculty on the tenure line. And it's equally important for faculty on the tenure line to see commonality with faculty who are on contingent appointments. Because the only way that the academy will be saved and our profession will be secure. And I mean, again, the the AUP slogan, academic freedom for a free society. I mean, the role that higher education plays in the well-being, the social well-being of this country, the only way that that will not be undermined is if faculty understand that divided we fall.